Welcome to Electron Line. The trick to being able to successfully. No, try again. Welcome to Electron Line. The trick to being successful in executing a triple integral is not only figuring out which dimension you want to integrate first, because sometimes it does matter and it, you'll be successful in one when one order and not with another doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to do it in various orders some are just easier to execute than others but also in choosing the correct coordinate system when our volume element can be expressed in terms of the product of dx dy dz we're working with the rectangular coordinate system but we could also use the cylindrical or the spherical coordinate system and we'll show you in some future videos how to do that well if we have an object that looks like a cylinder, you can imagine that it would be better if we use cylindrical coordinate system in order to do a triple integral because it will make it a lot easier. That doesn't mean you can do it with a Cartesian or what we call rectangular coordinate system. It just be more difficult. So I want to illustrate that. We're going to go ahead and find the volume of the cylinder using the rectangular coordinate system to show you that it is indeed possible. The dimensions on the base are 2 by 2, so the equation describing the base would be x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared, or 4, and so x can be written as the square root of 4 minus y squared. And of course, the height would be 8. If we're going to integrate that, we can see we're going to use the triple integral. We're going to integrate dx first, then dy, then dz. The limits for x are going to go from 0 to the square root of 4 minus y squared. So we're going to integrate in the x direction first, but we're going to do it from 0 to 2, or actually not from 0 to 2, because notice I'm integrating over here. I'm hitting the boundary here, so I don't actually go all the way out to the value 2 there. So I'm limited by the equation of this line, which is the equation x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. So I need to integrate from 0 to the edge of the line, which is the square root of 4 minus y squared. But if I'm going to integrate from 0 to there, then I have to multiply times 2 because I only did half of it in the x direction. Then I'm going to integrate in the y direction. Once I integrate like this, then the y goes from minus 2 to 2, but I chose the limits from 0 to 2 for y, so let me put a y in front of that. So it would be y equals 0, and here would be z equals 0, so from y from 0 to 2. So I need to multiply times 2 again because I only went half the distance. And finally, when I integrate over z, I go from 0 to 8, and I don't need a factor there because that's indeed the entire height. So I'm first going to integrate in the x direction from 0 to the edge. The edge is defined by the circle. Then I'm going to integrate in the y direction from minus 2 to 2, or only halfway that, multiply times 2, and then we integrate over the height. So let's go ahead and do that now. So first we're going to integrate dx, which becomes x. So this is equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to 8 and the integral from 0 to 2. So we have the two integrals for the, the y and the z direction still. And we have an x evaluated from 0 to the square root of 4 minus y squared. And then we still have our dx times dy. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. That's nothing. We plug in the upper limit, we get that. So now we have the 4 times the double integral from 0 to 8 from 0 to 2, and here we have the square root of 4 minus y squared times dx. Oh, no, no, this is no longer dx dy. This is now dy dz. Oh, I'm messing up here. That should be a z, so this should be a dy dz. All right. Now, this is where you can see that using rectangular coordinate system for a cylindrical shaped object is not the ideal situation because this ends up being a very difficult integral to execute. That's why using cylindrical coordinate systems it would be a whole lot easier. You'll see that in the next video. But we started this route, so let's complete it. Now the integral of this, the square root of 4 minus y squared dy, this is also known as the square root of a squared minus y squared, you get the following integral. So this is equal to... Now we have one integral left, we have still have the 4 in the front, we have one integral left of for z from 0 to 8, and then when we integrate this we get the following, we get 1 half times y times the square root of 4 minus y squared, and then we get plus 
a squared, which is 4, times, now we have the arc sine, the inverse sine of y over the square root of that, or simply a, so that would be y over a, well in this case a is 2, like that, and we're going to evaluate it, and I need a parenthesis around it like this, and we're going to evaluate it from 0 to 2, and we still have our dz, because we still have to do our third integral. So you can see that's a nasty integral, and at least if you remember how to do that, this is what it looks like. If you're trying to do that from scratch, it'll take a long time to execute it. But let's go ahead and plug in the limits and see what we get. Now, when we plug in the upper limit here, we get 4 minus 4, which is 0, so this goes away. When we plug in the lower limit, y goes to 0, so this goes away as well. So this has no contributing factor here. Only this gets a contributing factor. When we plug in the lower limit, the arc sine of 0 is 0, so we don't have to worry about that. When we plug in the upper limit, we do actually have a value there. So this becomes the following. This is equal to 4 times 1 half, which is 2 times the integral from 0 to 8 of, this is 0, and this will be 0 when we plug in the lower limit, but when we plug in the upper limit, we get 4 times, 4 times the arc sine of 2 over 2, which is really the arc sine of 1, which is 90 degrees, or pi over 2. We still have our dz there, so this is equal to 4 times 2, which is 8 times the integral from 0 to 8, and that would be pi over 2 times dz. And of course, that can go outside the integral sign, so we have 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 8 of dz. And now the last integral, of course, is easy. We simply integrate that. We get 4 pi times z evaluated from 0 to 8. Plug in the upper limit, we get 8. The lower limit gets nothing. So this is equal to 8 times 4, or 32 pi, as being the volume of that cylinder. Now, let's see if we actually got this correct, because we can easily calculate the volume of the cylinder. And let's see here. So the volume would be, let's put it down here, so the volume is equal to the base times the height. The base is a circle, so that would be pi r squared times the height, h, and so that would be pi times the radius, which is 2 squared times the height, which is 8. That's 4 times 8, which is 32 pi, and sure enough, we got the same answer, so we know we did it correctly. Obviously, it's a lot easier to do this, but at least this is a good illustration of how to do a triple integral using the rectangle coordinates, even though it's not ideal, and you end up with a, an integral here, which is actually quite hard to do. So that's why it's sometimes better to choose the coordinate system that will work the best for you. In the next video, we'll show you how to do a cylinder using cylindrical coordinates. It seems to make a lot of sense, doesn't it? So stay tuned, but at least you see that it can be done if you can work through the integral. That's how we do it.